Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 6th of June. India rejects statement by Islamic nations grouping on Prophet Muhammad remarks Rao. Taliban slams US report on attacks on minorities, says religious rights are protected in Afghanistan. And Bangladesh battles to douse blaze at container depot that killed 41. And now for all the details. Amid the chorus of criticism against remarks on Prophet Muhammad made by two leaders of India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, the Indian Foreign Ministry on Monday rejected the statements by Islamic Nations grouping OIC and termed them unwarranted and narrow-minded. The Foreign Ministry in a statement said the offensive comments did not in any way reflect the views of the government. Both the BJP leaders have been suspended or expelled. India's Foreign Ministry on Monday rejected the comments by Islamic Nations Grouping Organization of Islamic Cooperation OIC over Prophet Muhammad remarks row and termed them unwarranted and narrow-minded, adding that the offensive remarks did not in any way reflect the views of the government. The remarks against the Prophet by spokesperson of India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP Nupur Sharma and another official Naveen Kumar Jindal who have now been suspended or expelled by the party, have generated widespread anger among Muslims in India and overseas. While Nupur Sharma has issued unconditional apology, Jindal said his intentions were not to hurt anyone's sentiments. The influential 57-member body OIC in its statement said, these insults come in the context of the increasing intensity in hatred and insults to Islam in India. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakchi in response said the statement exposes OIC's divisive agenda and added Pakistan's criticism among them was ironical given its own record with minorities. I asked them to say something that they are trying to trip and trying to trip. I asked them a question. It was not that I want to take a step away from someone's mind. And that's why I say that we all have to be with all of us. We all have to be with all of us. Meanwhile, protests were held against the anti-Muslim remarks in India's financial capital of Mumbai on Monday. The Saudi Arabia has welcomed the action taken by the BJP to suspend the officials, while a Qatar embassy official said Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government must publicly distance itself from the comments. Some of India's top officials were also engaged in managing the diplomatic fallout in the Gulf countries. The controversy erupted even as Vice President Venkaiah Naidu began his visit to Doha, part of a three-nation tour. Indian PM Modi in recent years has strengthened economic ties with the energy-rich nations, the top source for countries' fuel imports. And an intense heat wave has once again swept parts of India with temperatures hovering past 40 degrees Celsius, giving people a tough time. The weather office has warned that many parts of the country will be experiencing extreme heat wave conditions in the next three, four days. Temperatures have risen again in parts of India after a brief spell of rain giving the residents a tough time who have been struggling to carry out their daily activities amid the scorching heat. With temperatures as high as 43 degrees Celsius on Monday, people in Dalpur district of India's northwestern Rajasthan state were forced to carry umbrellas, drink juices and cover their heads and faces to protect themselves from the extreme heat. We are very because of the वैसे तो घरों में ही रहते हैं ज़्यादातर जब भी कोई कार्य होता है घर से बाहर जाने के लिए तो दोपहर में जैसे हम निकलते हैं तो गर्मी के मारे सूरज हम के हमारे शरीर को जला देता है। Meanwhile, subsequent water shortage has forced women in remote areas of Nasik district in western Maharashtra state 
to take a strenuous three-kilometer journey in search of water. Several villages in the drought-prone regions of western Maharashtra are facing an acute water shortage as the heat has dried up most of the natural resources. The IMD, the India Meteorological Department, has issued a heat wave warning for northwest, central, and east India for the next three to four days. Earlier on Sunday, the maximum temperature breached past the 47 degrees Celsius in capital New Delhi's Mungeshpur area. India suffered its hottest march in more than a century and temperatures have remained above 40 degrees Celsius in many cities since April. Scientists have linked it to climate change and says more than a billion people in India and neighbouring Pakistan are in some way at risk from the extreme heat. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Vice Chairman Shah Mahmood Qureshi has warned the government of strong political reaction in case party chairman and former Prime Minister Imran Khan is arrested. The statement came as after Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah said that Khan, who was granted three-week transit bail on June 2nd, would be arrested once his protective bail expires. PTI Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Vice Chairman Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Sunday warned the government that if party chairman and former Prime Minister Imran Khan is arrested, it should be ready to face strong political reaction from the party workers. This followed hours after Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah said that Imran Khan would be arrested once his protective bail expires on the 25th of June. Khan has been nominated in over two dozens of cases, including rioting, sedition, chaos and armed attacks at the Federation, he added. Ahead of PTI's second long march to Islamabad, Khan was granted three-week transit bail by Peshawar High Court. He had moved the court against his possible arrest in case he marches to Islamabad again. And if the ये बाबर कराना चाहती है कि उसका एक شدید رد عمل آئے گا اور اگر کسی کو خیال ہے کہ خاموشی سے قوم یا تحریک انصاف کی تنظیم یا کارکنان اسے برداشت کریں گے تو وہ غلط فہمی میں ہے قریشی also informed that no party lawmaker would appear before national assembly speaker Raja Parvez Ashraf to verify their resignations the former foreign minister also stated that the PTI's core committee has expressed concerns about Pakistan's economic situation. Meanwhile, responding to Quraysh's press conference, Sanaullah said whoever breaks the law will be dealt with by the law. The interior minister said the government cannot act as a mere spectator if the PTI lies and creates anarchy in the country. Well, moving on, the workers of the Revenue Department in Pakistan-administered Kashmir recently staged a sit-in protest to demand allowances at par with other government employees. They blamed the Pakistan government has continued to systematically deny benefits and rights to the people in the illegally occupied region. The Revenue Department employees in Pakistan-administered Kashmir recently held a sit-in protest to demand allowances at par with the other government employees and officers. They said only a few selected officials have been given executive allowances and they are being denied any such benefits. They added that their demands should be heard soon, as budget for the region is slated to be announced by the government soon. <laughs> और ये एग्जीक्यूटिव लाउंस उनको मिला है और हमने मुतालबा ये किया कि उनको एग्जीक्यूटिव लाउंस मिला है और हमें रेवेन्यू लाउंस दें ये 1.5 टाइम है जो छोटे मुलाजिमों को नहीं मिला है ये बड़ी ज्यादती है कि सिर्फ हमारे ऑफिसर्स को मिला है लोकल्स हैव लॉन्ग ब्लेम दैट पाकिस्तान सिस्टमेटिकली डिनाइज बेनिफिट्स राइट्स एंड रिसोर्सेज टू द पीपल इन इट्स इलीगली ऑक्युपाइड टेरिटरीज दे से सक्सेसिव गवर्नमेंट्स इन पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्टर्ड कश्मीर हैव पेड लिटिल अटेंशन टू देयर प्रेसिंग प्रॉब्लम्स ओवर द इयर्स 
And in news from Afghanistan, the Taliban administration in Afghanistan has rejected a report by the U.S. State Department which raises concerns over persecution of religious minorities in the country since the group seized power last year. Although the Taliban has repeatedly claimed that the security situation has improved, terror attacks mostly targeting Shia Hazara minority have continued to take place frequently. The Taliban has rejected the U.S. State Department's report on international religious freedom, which raises concerns about the deteriorating state of religious minorities in Afghanistan since the Islamic Emirate seized power last August. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid said on Twitter on Sunday, the religious and civil rights of all minorities in Afghanistan are protected and they practice their religion freely. The report is incomplete and based on false information, he said. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken during the report's presentation last Thursday denounced the persecution of religious minorities in Afghanistan, along with women's access to education and work being restricted. Although the Taliban has repeatedly claimed that the security situation in the country has improved since they came to power, terrorist attacks mostly perpetrated by militant group Islamic State on the Shia Hazara minority have continued to take place frequently. The women's access to jobs has also been restricted, with a few exceptions, such as in the health sector and limited access to education. Moreover, the Taliban has made it compulsory for women to wear veil and be accompanied by a male family member when travelling. Well, moving on to news from Bangladesh, firefighters in Bangladesh battled for a third day on Monday to stamp out a massive fire that killed more than 40 people at a container depot in an incident that spotlights the South Asian nation's poor safety record. More deaths are feared, however, as some of the injured are in critical condition, reports suggest. Meanwhile, the authorities have launched an investigation into the deadly fire incident. Firefighters worked for a third day on Monday to extinguish a massive blaze that killed 41 people at a container depot in southeast Bangladesh, the latest incident highlighting the country's poor industrial safety track record. Footage showed thick columns of smoke and rows of burnt-out containers as the fire, which started on Saturday, persisted at Sitakunda, 40 kilometers from the southeastern port city of Chittagong. The fire has been largely reined in but not entirely extinguished. Fire officials suspected the source of the fire to be a container of hydrogen peroxide, adding that containers nearby loaded with chemicals posed a risk of life-threatening explosions. Officials revised the death toll down to 41 from 49, with more than 200 injured. The tally included at least nine dead firefighters, while 10 policemen were among the 50 rescue officials injured, said a police official. Meanwhile, the privately owned shipping facility has promised compensation of 1 million taka, that is 11,000 US dollars, to the family of each worker killed in the fire. Bangladesh has become the world's second biggest exporter of garments in recent decades, but its infrastructure for and focus on industrial safety is still nascent, the International Labour Organization said this year. Lex regulations and poor enforcement have been blamed for conflagrations in recent years that led to hundreds of deaths. And amid the financial crisis, Sri Lanka will be witnessing two hours and 15 minutes daily power cuts in several areas from Monday until the 12th of June. The Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka has approved the Ceylon Electricity Board's request for power interruptions. The power cuts on June 11th and 12th will last only one hour. The Ceylon Electricity Board said that they were compelled to take demand management measures due to inadequate power generation as a result of fuel shortage. Sri Lanka, an island nation of 22 million people, is reeling under its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948, with a severe shortage of foreign exchange severely curtailing imports, including essentials such as fuel and medicines, and bringing hours of power cuts every now and then. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.